and it's immoral. This organization that calls itself the government then only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I agree. I, I definitely think that the um, government is immoral and that, um, sorry, yeah, just yeah, a little yeah. like, um, sorry about being on camera. Yeah, no, you're good. But you're I do good. definitely think about these things all the time. Um, right. I definitely think that, um, I don't know, I think that in a way we need to, the system that we have right now is broken and like the government doesn't have any type of accountability for it because like the government is like this entity and it's like this blind entity and it's like when you want to go talk to like somebody about the government, it's like who do you actually talk to? Like who are you addressing? Who are you holding accountable for these things? It's like no one actually. Like, right. So. It's like one of those things that keep you holding on waiting and forever. Yeah. And, you know, they'll transfer to someone else and after a couple of phone calls, you know, you get disconnected, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of like that kind of madness in like going to DMV, just trying to wait to get to your line, and it's like, well, sorry, we gave you the wrong kind of number, so you yeah. have to start all over again. Um, yeah, there's no accountability, right? There is no transparency. There is no yeah. way, uh, I would say, really to kind of keep it in check in, in terms of that. Exactly, um, and this representative type of government is not for the people at all. It's like for business interests and stuff like that, you know what I mean? For, for people who want that kind of control, uh, the way to do it is through government, yeah. absolutely. Um, what do you think, though? If, of course, if you remove government, then there's no way that these interests could control people, right? Because government has all the guns. Government's the only people organization that can get taxes, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so government is really the, the kind of organization that if you want to control uh, rich men and people, you kind of have to use it. But if you remove it, mm -hmm. then they're on equal playing field with everyone else, right? They don't get special interest laws for them. Yeah. Um, they don't get uh, rules that uh, apply only to us, but not for them, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of kind of a discrimination or a discrepancy in that. Um, what, what do you think of that? Um, I agree. Um, but I feel like if you, like, dismantle this system, I feel like something else better would have to be in place of it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like All right, so the cool thing about, so, like, uh, the thing, we because the thing is, I want roads, I want law, I want security, yeah. right? I want... Uh, Alcohol. ABC has a monopoly on digital spirits, right? Government again, right? So when we look at these things that we do want, uh, these are things that government has a monopoly on. Yeah. So they don't allow anyone to cancel or unsubscribe as you would from like a regular business. Hey, I don't like your product. I don't like your service. I'm going somewhere else. But the thing is, you can't go anywhere else because government makes it illegal for you to compete against them, right? Mm -hmm. So I do want these uh, services the government has monopolized, right? Uh, so the abolition of government then frees up the market for you to have the entrepreneur spirit to say, you know what, I can provide you a better security that's not going to be abusive or harmful to you, mm -hmm. uh, the consumer, right? Yeah. Uh, we, we can have rules that we finally give explicit consent to, right? Mm -hmm. Not forced by the majority into the minority. Uh, yeah. Rules in which, like, you have rules like in your room, in your property, in your house, but those rules don't transcend across the river into my house, right? Yeah. So, rural rules for respect for property rights, for self ownership, that's your, these are your clothes, that's your money, that's your car, that's your land. Mm -hmm. Whereas under government, they'll say, well, eminent domain is, that's our land now. Uh, property says, that's our house now. Mm -hmm. uh, and all these different kinds of taxes add up to nearly half your income mm -hmm. and that they just they take from you, right? Yeah. Um, so that's what you would call then uh, a free market society based on consent, right? Yeah. And then you, you wouldn't have politicians anymore. You wouldn't have the police that are not consumer driven, but how many tickets they can give to people. Mm -hmm. Right, um, you don't have any other kind of mess that we have today. In which, if your if your lawn was like uh, out of limits, they'll mm -hmm. charge you, right? But if it's the city government, like it has been for like two weeks ago, mm -hmm. right, for a little while, well, you know, it's just us, right? Yeah. So under government, the rules apply to us; they don't apply to government. You're not allowed to steal; we'll call it taxes. You're not allowed to murder; <laughs> we'll call it organized war, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody blows up something, oh, that's a catastrophic uh, catastrophe, right? If government doesn't, it's just collateral damage, right? Mm -hmm. They call it by a different name when government does it because they want to call themselves kind of special magical entity that's yeah. above morality, right? Exactly. <laughs> so um, how would you suggest that we, you know... How do we get there? Yeah. Uh, I guess the best way to do it is by, by reaching out to our neighbors, like right now, right? We, we have these conversations, right? We mm -hmm. find that we have these moral principles that we do are, we are united with, right? Yeah. Uh, I think that is the best way to kind of push this moral challenge forward. Uh, when you push morality forward and these values, they never go backwards, right? Yeah. 
Uh, so as a community, we kind of have to kind of unite underneath that and then create something new towards a real peaceful society yeah. and one that just turns our back away from those that seek to harm and threaten us. Yeah, because like if we really did take the Constitution for what it is, like it tells you that the people are for it and like in order to form a more perfect union and all that, you know, BS, like, right. I feel like we could use that, you know, against them and be right. like, okay, this is not what we want anymore. We want something else. And, you know, it's going to be, you know, a fight for it because, yeah. I mean, they, they want to be in control, but at the same time, if everybody did want this and they wanted a change, I feel like it could happen, but I just don't know how. You right, know? right. Uh, so the organization I'm with is called Liberate RBA, right? Mm -hmm. Liberate us from uh, this violence, from this politics, from these things of, of people who try to harm peaceful people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I want contracts, real contracts, though. Like we talk about the Constitution, I want real contracts, though, that we have our explicit signature on, though, mm -hmm. right? Like, if I got in contact with a couple of my friends, it doesn't apply to you, right? Since I, you never gave anyone power of attorney, uh, you were never present. So I don't see sometimes how a, like an old piece of paper written over 200 years ago is applicable to the unborn, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of like Social Security. When you were born, it's like, well, we're going to use you as collateral. You're forced to pay for it. But when it's time for you to retire, there's nothing left, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so contracts are very important, right? Yeah. I think that that's a good foundational way towards a free society. Uh, one in which uh, all of us can say, yeah, here are the rules. Yeah, I dig it. I, I love it, right? Um, and underneath that, though, you can now have many communities near each other based on consent with different rules but underlying respect for property rights, right? So now you can have a 420-friendly apartment complex, one across the street that's not, right? Yeah. Go for it, right? Uh, if you hate cannabis, great. Here's the community for you, right? Uh, you can have your Amish community, right? I never see them kind of jumping over people's walls to sneak in or break shit, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can have, like in Florida, your 55 and older community, right? Different preferences, different lifestyles, but still under the uh, the principle that we all share. It's wrong and immoral to initiate force. We respect property rights, self-ownership, mm -hmm. um, and we want to live peacefully uh, in, in, in this world together, yeah. right? Um, so that's, that's for, I guess I'm here, trying to find uh, people who want to be champions of liberty to kind of create something new, right? Mm -hmm. Not the same tired stuff that we're hearing now on TV. It's like Trump now and, and Hillary. It's like, this yeah. is like idiocracy. You ever yeah. seen that movie? Um, I haven't, but just this two-party system is just like an illusion of free choice. Like, right. Oh, we have, but they're basically the same thing, if you think about it. It is. I mean? It's meant to kind of distract us into thinking that, uh, to, to turn us away from option C, none of the above. So, mm -hmm. to, right? Yeah. So, just like, well. Like, redo. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't think about that. Your only choices are government or government, right? Yeah. So, uh, and that's, that's how they trick us, right? And so, and to give us the illusion of choice, illusion of freedom, you still choose government. And at the end, it doesn't matter who wins the election, government wins, right? Yeah. Um, at our expense, no less. So, that pretty much, that's the option that we want to kind of go out there and talk to people. How about option C? None of the above. Oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's just never really out there to consider or to kind of present, right? Yeah. Um, so let me give you a pamphlet. I mean, a flyer. This is uh, what we do. We do a lot of uh, parties, gatherings, talks, uh, economic workshops. This is my card. Okay. Uh, yeah, feel free to contact me. Next Saturday we have a party. So it's like anarcho-skepticism. So talk about skepticism, because that's kind of healthy, right? Mm -hmm. Towards, for any kind of idea or any kind of thought or philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. um, skepticism helps to be, you know, healthy and kind of, you know, oils and greases the mind into coming to that conclusion yourself. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. That's rational, yeah. logical. Um, and so that's kind of the way forward with a lot of these things, I think, right? Having a shared fundamental value for philosophy, right? That's mm -hmm. not something you can practice on your own. So yeah. um, I'm Cal. Nice to meet you. I'm Sherman. Sherman, pleasure. Uh, but yeah, hit me up. Send me a message. Um, thanks for coming out here today. Right. <laughs> this is a beautiful day. I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. I never thought I would, you know, be on camera talking to somebody about the things that I think about with my friend all the time. All right. Yeah. Uh, is that a mud kip? Is that, is that a mud kip? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much, man. No yeah, problem. You have a great nice day. Nice talking to you. You too. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, that was a good Spreading Anarchy video that we did today at Bell Isle. <laughs> and this video actually goes out to my friend, Kurt. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support um, in Spreading Anarchy today. So what do you think about the um, Ergus doing that? It's a lot of fun. Spreading the message of freedom is a very uh, addicting thing to do. <laughs> Just showing the human potential that there is for people to do out there. All right.
And the last conversation was kind of interesting. Uh, we ran into uh, three people trying to get people to vote. And one was a little bit standoffish, right? A little, a little bit in there. Yeah, uh, she immediately disengaged. Right. <laughs> Not even interested. The other person, though, that was pretty cool. Uh, getting on board, and she was like, you know what? Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, what do we do about that? A hundred to zero instantly. Yeah. <laughs> Understood everything. Yeah, so we stopped them because they're saying, hey, would you like to build? He's like, actually, we we go against it. We just, we were just here today on Bell Isle. We're just talking against it. We're leaving on our way back. And I said, well, do you guys have a minute and uh, tell you how to like, govern some more, present the argument against voting? And we're like, okay, sure. And we just kind of had that conversation and it worked uh, beautifully. Yep. <laughs> and I guess we have. Um, maybe an interest of moving here right yes um my wife and i are looking at potentially moving out of the middle of nowhere in nebraska <laughs> but um just visiting and so far it's been amazing only been here about a day now but <laughs> so many trees it's beautiful and we have a lot to do still until the week is through <laughs> exactly yeah so um thank you guys for watching thank you so much my friend for, no for coming out for no Spreading the message of freedom. Uh, that was a lot of fun today, and I guess we'll continue to do that this week. Trump is supposed to come this Friday, so that's to be entering and countering. Yeah. <laughs> so with that, uh, see you guys at the Victory Party, and stay liberated.